Welcome back my pigment nerds and in this video we are going to be taking a good look at the Pimontite Genuine. Daniel Smith writes about Pimontite as ground from a scarlet streaked mineral from the hills of Italy, Pimontite Genuine is a rich versatile primitive watercolour. A deep ruddy violet is the darkest value of this watercolour. Adding water produces lovely violet brown granulation with a carmine tone, perfect for adding interest to shadows or painting the mottled surface of autumn leaves. There is a trend I'm noticing with these Daniel Smith's description and that is that when they talk about the colour, they keep it pretty short and they tend to be for quite unique colours. Whereas when they start waffling about the magic and the powers and the enrichment and all that fluffy stuff, it's usually to justify a colour that is quite similar to other colours already in the range by trying to add an extra mystical value to it. So having had a look at pretty much all the Primatic range so far, I would say that if you want to find unique colours, have a look on their website and see how short the description is and how much it talks about the colour itself rather than magic and then go for those colours. Anyway, Pimontite is a series for paint, so very expensive. It is classified as excellent in light vastness, semi-transparent, low staining and granulating. Welcome back, the paints have dried and this is Pimontite. Making this video has made me realise I've been calling this colour Pimontai rather than Pimontite, so I apologise for all my previous videos where I've been mispronouncing this colour. I love this colour, is my first impression. I already have this in my landscape palette because it's such a unique and gorgeous colour. It does have this reddy violet undertone with a heavy dose of black granulation which is just so gorgeous and I would say this is such a good representation of when Primatech colours do it right. It's unique colours and it's beautiful colours. In terms of gradation, it gradated really well. You can see four different stages which is what you want from a well-behaving paint. And the textures on the hot press, the cold press and the rough paper of the Bockingford is beautiful and strong. However, not so much on the arch cold press paper. So it behaves very differently depending on the paper. So it's totally worth testing out this colour on the paper of your choice before you put it on your main painting. In terms of hue, let's have a look. There isn't really a similar colour in the... Primatech range. Red Fuchsia is the closest, but as we said in that episode, these two have very different properties. The Red Fuchsia is sparkly and barely non granulating, whereas the Pimontite is non sparkly and heavily, heavily granulating with a black granulation. Now, I know I'm not going to find colors that are similar in other brands because this is a unique look. However, we can look for the undertone colors happening. Let's look at other Daniel Smiths. Not really. Oh, Luna Red Rock is slightly similar to the Palmontite. And I know Luna Red Rock also has the black granulation. 
And the more I'm looking at this, they are pretty similar. Now, Luna Red Rock it is a Series 1 color, whereas Paimontai is a Series 4 color. So I would say if you already have Luna Red Rock on your palette or you have it in your collection, then maybe give Paimontai a mess because it's so much more expensive than the Luna Red Rock. However, I would say that the Paimontai does have much heavier granulation. So if you are super into your granulation and you want that look, then I think it would be worth paying the extra money for the Paimontite compared to the Luna Red Rock. Let's look at other brands. Yeah, I th think in terms of hue, the Schmincke Indian Red is kind of close, but only in the undertone and this doesn't granulate. So I would say the Paimontite look is quite unique to Daniel Smith, whether you go for the Paimontite or the lunar red rock in terms of opacity i am looking at this and i do see some hints of red like a tiny tiny amount of red on the black stripe if it's in the correct sun so i would say it's not transparent but it's also not semi-transparent it's somewhere in between the two and if you want to take a closer look at this test sheet and all other test sheets that I make for this channel, then I do upload high res scans of everything over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash autocarno. In terms of lifting, Dennis Smith classifies this as low staining. However, I would say this is medium staining. It's actually quite hard to get back to white paper on this. So yes, this is more medium staining than low staining. In terms of glazing, it doesn't glaze very well. You see that lighter line of where I paint the outline and then when I come to fill it, the colors have already lifted off the paper, which is which is quite strange considering it's a harder paint to lift, but there you go. However, in terms of seeing the layers, if you do manage to get a flat glazing, it's a good color. So get some practicing with the glazing before you do it on your main painting but other than that you're gonna get pretty good glazing with clear layers if that's the look you're going for in terms of gauzing i love this i love it when i get two-tone results of gauzing and palmontite definitely delivers you get the red background with the black granulation collecting in the fibers of the gauze and then settling down on the paint and this is beautiful i love it for reaction to salt, it definitely reacts to salt. It's definitely a relatively bigger reaction. It's not localized into dots. The reactions are connecting with each other. The red color gets pushed out and the black pigments just stick in with the salt and collects together. However, I think the black pigment themselves do get soaked up by the salt because there's not much darkness it's not like this remaining on the paper itself in terms of wetting wet it does spread quite well it also creates this fractured look which is quite interesting the paint does move through water quite well and you can tell that by the fact that the whole of the background is tinted in this violety pink color mixing it with other colors I think it mixes really well, although it's debatable as to how pretty a color it is. However, in terms of creating a shadow color version of the color you're painting with, I think it's a lovely color to use. It mutes down the color. Remember, we start off with these colors and we mix it with Pimontite to end up with these colors. And I have to say they are very nice shadow versions of the brighter colors. So I would say it's a quite useful color for shadow color as Daniel Smith recommended. So what do I think of this color? I love this color just for the richness and how unique this color is. I already have it on my landscape palette. I love painting with it. I re personally recommend this color. However, it's interesting because this is the first time I've compared the Paimontite with the Luna Red Rock and I'm like, ah, they are quite similar and they behave in quite similar ways. And Pamontite is series four, Luna Red Rock is series one. Now I think 
after doing this test, I would probably recommend Lunar Red Rock over the Pyramid type, especially for people who are looking to save money on what colors they buy. And I would only recommend Pyramid type as the better choice if you are looking to splurge out and you are looking for some luxury in your art practice. Because any color that series for, I'm sorry, is purely for luxury, I think. Especially when there are cheaper colors that are available that are quite similar to any series four color. So what do you think of this color? Would you go for the series four over the series one lunar red rock? If you have experience of painting with both the Pymontite and the lunar red rock, do let us know in the comments down below what you think is the big difference between the two colors are. And if you do have Pymontite on your palette, then do let us know your favorite way of using this color in your painting. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!